What's up, YouTube? This is Strident, and uh, I'm continuing uh, my DC Animated Universe movie review, or, you know, info. Um, pretty much, uh, I think I left off the last one talking about the existing DC Comics films. Uh, I think the last one that I mentioned was, uh, it wasn't under Red Hood, it was, um, I think All Star Superman. Um, these that I'm gonna, you know, bring to light are a couple that maybe a couple of you already know, or many of you may know, and uh, the majority might be, you know, there might be a few in here that a majority of you aren't sure, you know, sure of. Uh, first off, there's Green Lantern Emerald Knights. If you've been on any like websites like Game Trailers or IGN or anything, you've probably seen a couple clips from it. And what it is is it's the same concept as Gotham Knight, except the difference is it's uh it looks like it's done in the same style for all the stories it's just written by different writers and they did something that i always wanted and how many fans wanted is we we always felt that the green lantern should be nathan fillion guess what nathan fillion is the green lantern he is hal jordan which with that it, it ups hal jordan's mojo in my opinion like three billion points because I was never a big fan of Hal Jordan because he was just another to me generic you know white guy with a superpower um he wasn't very interesting I liked Kyle Rayner actually when I was a kid growing up Kyle Rayner was the Green Lantern that I paid attention to Kyle Rayner even Guy Gardner all of them were more interesting to me and then uh and Jon Stewart was there too but Jon Stewart was on the TV series so I got to you know get used to him so, um, you know, it, and it's lame that these days they're making, uh, they're making Hal Jordan do things. He's borrowing abilities from other lanterns in order to make him cool. Because if you, if you are a true fan, you know, Hal Jordan did not have the imagination, uh, the creativity that the others had. He would make things like simple things like chairs, folding chairs scissors catching mitts boxing gloves you know simple stupid things because he's from that time whereas kyle he was the comic book artist he would make super ridiculously imaginative things like mech suits and uh monsters and like doubles of himself and others and things like that you know um freaking uh Stewart, John Stewart had like the really technical mind so if he made something it was technically sound and it, it, his constructs, they could exist because he was an architect and his mind just worked like that, which seems like something that got lost in translation in the, the series. It's probably the one downside to the Justice League animated series, even though they had examples of him creating really technological constructs. But either way, this is going to be awesome. Emerald Knights, if you're a Green Lantern fan or not, if you just like superheroes if you like animation this looks like something that would be worth checking out i'm gonna get mine um the next is batman year one it's uh frank miller wrote year one back in the day and it was like the a lot of batman begins was based off of this and uh i've already seen some screens of this and it looks nice i mean they they did a good job uh imitating uh what is the guy's name Mazza kelly i think his name is something uh they 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 did a good job imitating david mazzichelli's art and it's pretty nice you know to see the dc guys do this because i mean it's a pretty story it's it's going to be really gritty really realistic almost noir style because it's not focusing on batman dealing with like clayface and things like that i mean if they switch it around and add that sci-fi element that batman started to gain I think it'll be awesome but if not and they leave it just the way the book was it's still gonna be an awesome story because this was when Frank Miller was still at his best um, then there's Justice League Doom which is based on a book that I liked a lot it was a uh, the Tower of Babel JLA Tower of Babel and it was the book where uh, I think it was Talia al Ghul managed to get into, uh, or Ra's al Ghul, or the League of Assassins, managed to get into Batman's computer and find the uh, contingency files on, or contingency plans for all of the League. 
pretty much the plans on how to defeat every member of the league. And they used this on, you know, the various members of the league and then tried to take down bats. And, you know, that in itself is just like, holy crap. And I think also he did, he had these plans, but didn't let everyone else know that he did, which I don't know why they didn't figure it out. But, you know, um, the Wikipedia entry says that it was written by Dwayne McDuffie right before his death. So it's one of those movies that, you know, Dwayne McDuffie wrote most of the best episodes of Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. Best dialogue, most memorable situations, um, Destroyer and... Uh, uh, what was it? Or Destroyer 1 and 2. That was that was Mr. McDuffie. So, um, yeah. That's one I am definitely going to check out. Definitely. Um, and then The Dark Knight Returns. Another Frank Miller story. Probably the penultimate uh, Frank Miller story. Uh, they're going to turn into an animated film. Which is probably the only way you could do this properly. Unless, unless you uh, had... Um, What's the guy's name? Uh, uh, Zack Snyder direct it and have it be a CG film, you know. But uh, it's it's gonna be uh, um, that's gonna be something to see because I think the DCAU P, uh, staff will be able to take that story and still distill it to an essence that actually does the original tale justice. Because you know when you go back and you read that book, there's a lot of preachy stuff in there and a lot of uh, not so interesting uh cheesy details so it would be cool to see someone take that put a, a little a small bit of modernization to it and make things make a little bit more sense and uh you got a winner on our hands and that's what the dcau is all about distilling classic stories to the essence getting the major points out there and then cutting off trimming off all the fat and i cannot wait also, they've been uh, I've, I've I've seen and heard uh, Bruce Tim talk about a possible Catwoman film. Now, if he does a Catwoman film, that'll be awesome because he says that uh, she could support her own movie and it would erase the stain of that live action movie. He didn't even need to go into detail because we all know what kind of a turd that movie was. So it will be awesome to uh, you know see this. Um, they've been talking about uh, Bruce Timm's been talking about how he would like to do an Aquaman and Green uh, Arrow movie Green Arrow already had a cool uh, short on the DC uh, DC showcase uh, collection and it was awesome, it's slick it's like if, they get the same, if they get Neil McDonough to be um, Green Arrow in the, the new movie that they plan on doing I'm there because dude's timing, everything, his voice, the whole nine was awesome. If they get uh, his actor from the original, from Justice League, uh, the series, um, geez, why is it I always lose my, my train of thought with that? Justice League, the voice actor for Green Arrow in Justice League Unlimited, it would be awesome. I think his name was uh, Ken Schreiner. That guy timing is perfect i didn't like the voice in the batman he's just not he didn't sound the point you know or the wow he didn't sound the part he needs to have that sarcastic quippy kind of you know frustrate like he sound he needs to sound frustrated or like he's struggling to keep up almost you know or like he doesn't have time for this you know but you know there's like a an air of him giving a shit you know anyway if they do this, would be awesome. They also mentioned doing a Flash uh, animated film, which would be awesome because, I mean, Flash is an awesome character. And it's been a while since we've seen him support something on his own. I mean, I think, realistically, it would be more... It's more logical for them to do an animated version of the Flash before they do the live-action uh, Flash movie. I remember years ago, they kept saying... Ryan Reynolds was going to be the Flash, which would have made a lot of sense. I would have seen him as the Flash before... Uh, Green Lantern, but, uh, you know, silly Hollywood execs, they do what they want to do, you know? They figure, oh, people are talking about Deadpool, Deadpool, so we need to take him and make him do something else, and now we have uh, Ryan Reynolds as uh, the Green Lantern. So hopefully that'll be cool, 
But uh, yeah, that's this is about it on all I have to report. And this is all information you guys can look up on Wikipedia. You can look it up on IGN. Uh, you can look it up on uh, uh, some of the other sites like Bruce Tim's sites or the DCAU um, wiki and all that. And you know, you can check and see if, if what I'm saying makes sense. But uh, a lot of these things have been hinted at at different Comic Cons. Because every time Bruce Tim speaks, he gives us a little bit more insight as to what the, the his his animation team is working on or would like to work on. So, you know, these are they're becoming the reason why I'm a big DC fan. So, um anyway, that's it for me. Uh I think next I'm gonna get into some uh reviews on a couple other superhero movies. Might even throw in some kung fu movies because I haven't done any martial arts movie reviews yet. And I think you guys need to um I need to hip you to a lot of martial arts movies because we don't get them anymore the way we used to and the ones that exist right now are not necessarily the best example of the genre so you know stay tuned for that all right all right people i'm out check me out as always at www.lordnephilim.deviantart.com